Welcome to part 5 of the Get A Campaign Abridged. Previously we were in a war with the guys in the top right of Lugia, our new province. We had two major battles, one big knight victory and one slightly edgier but ultimately successful fort battle. However, as we went on to finish them off, we're now at war with the Scordisci and the Lugos back in our other territories, which is going to cause some problems. But for now, it's one more battle against these guys up near Kronos, and it's a bridge battle in which we are drawing out the town's garrison, a perfect chance to take them down, although our army is in terrible condition. We're on the same side as the garrison reinforcements, so the first priority is to cross the river. There is going to be one enemy unit on the other side, their general who started this battle. He's over at this ford, and he's not going to last too long because he has to fight half of our army. As you can probably tell, I've sent half across the ford and half across a bridge further to the north of the map. That general just gets killed by the slingers, and we set up to wait for the reinforcements. Looks like they're splitting off to attack both crossings, so did the right thing by splitting our army up as well. I'm going to put most of the cav on the enemy's side, ready to get up to some antics once the fighting starts. For example, this right here. I'm able to aggro away one of the units coming towards the bridge using my horse archers, so they'll walk off and put themselves in a dangerous position. On the bridge, we've got a couple of our units of hoplites ready to stop the enemy. Well, I say on the bridge, after the bridge, because actually standing on the bridge is very glitchy, basically. It's very hard to order a shield wall to go onto the bridge, so I just forgot about that. Anyway, as for this one unit that's come off on its own, we can now hit them with our general's cav. This heavy cav charge actually doesn't take them out to the extent I thought it would. Thought we might just pile through these guys because they're all loose. But we do have the horse archers as well. They come into the back and that's going to be a rout. These garrison units only have low morale, so we don't have to kill that many of them to finish the unit off. Meanwhile, looks like the fighting's getting started at the front. And this will be a case of us just hoping our hoplites don't die to the enemy's Germanic warriors. One advantage the enemy might have here is all of their units can throw jabs, and they might just stand on the bridge throwing jabs forward and wipe us out. However, for some reason they chose to throw their jabs mainly at my baggage train, who were in cover, and perhaps have smaller hitboxes on the guys on the horses, sorry, that don't have riders. So overall, the jab attacks don't do that much to weaken our defences there. We also managed to aggro away one more unit from the back of that attacking group. Go for another charge with the heavy cav. Again, not that good, but the horse archers finished them off. Although one of the units of horse archers has already routed at this point, they routed while chasing that first unit we killed off the field. Just like in the previous episode, these horse archer units have such low base morale, they can rout while killing routing enemies, which really sucks. Now the fight over at the ford is getting started. Since we have all of the slingers here, Things are quite easy for us. The water slows the enemy down, so they're just going to get slung to death. And they're also stopping in the middle of the river to throw their jabs. Potentially an issue, but they're choosing mainly to throw them at these Germanic levy. So just like with the supply train, they're being a nice aggro beacon. We're losing a unit that we can certainly afford to lose in terms of the rest of this battle, at least. I also tried to use my jab cav to rear attack the enemy blob, but they turned and started jabbing me, so I'm going to get out of there and wait for a better opportunity. Meanwhile, no more opportunities have arisen for attacks over at the bridge, but we can always do this. Just run down the bridge with the heavy cav and hope this does something. We slam into the back of the enemy blob. Doesn't kill that many guys, but it's a big morale shock for the whole blob. And three of the units route and the other units going to route as a result of those routes. So basically, we've now suddenly won this part of the fight. But really, the fight isn't over. This is a siege drawout battle. Our main objective is to kill all of these enemies. So now the baggage train comes in in slow motion for some reason to come and block the enemy's escape. Our hoplites are very slow, so they won't be able to pursue effectively. We'll be relying on the baggage train to bag us some kills right there. Looks like things are going very well over at the ford. The enemy have just failed to cross and units are routing away from us without even reaching our side. The killing of the guys with the baggage train didn't really go to plan. I think in Rome too, unlike in a lot of the other Total War games, when units are routing, their melee defense stats still apply, so you can block an attack against a routing unit or they can block it. So, you're not guaranteed to kill them. They can route through you and escape, meaning a few troops will escape unfortunately but we'll just do our best. Same thing over at the ford. While the enemy were routing away, I couldn't let them go, so I sent these horse archers forward to try and bag some kills. It was safe to do that, 
because the other units waiting to cross turned away. They were trying to go after the various miscellaneous units I have about the place. They're getting aggroed really far away onto things they can just hide and run. So that's great. This disrupts the enemy's plan completely. And we even get this nice opportunity. An axe unit was on its own, so I just charged it with my jav cav. That might have been enough to kill the unit, but we can seal the deal with our general coming in from behind. I think that might have been the leader of the garrison army in that unit as well. And while that's happening, our weaker units are going after the now exposed routers who are gradually running away from earlier defeats and we're totally finishing them off. We want to get this enemy army down to minimum strength because it's reinforcements and as I've mentioned before that means you do have to kill them on the field for it to count. The remaining enemy units came back to cross the river after a while. We simply blocked them and then I attacked them from behind with my cav. Not the best thing actually because they've got a spear unit and it just turns around to fight my cav. However, at this late stage in the battle, the enemy's army losses are immense, so these remaining three units just rout without taking that much damage. And then it's going to be another case of waiting for us to kill them all. There'll be an absolute mass slaughter as they try to escape while surrounded from all directions, both by our troops and by invisible collision boxes that restrict your movement near the water. And here's the final result. We bag a heroic victory. Only three enemy units are alive and they're basically dead, so that town will now basically be ours, but it's not all good news. We've just had some of our territory sacked by the Scordisci, and the Lugos are currently besieging the walled settlement that is the capital of Lugia, and both of those regions are food producing, meaning overall we now have a food shortage. So now our territory is looking very vulnerable, and we might be facing attrition across the board. Well, at least we can do the finishing move on this town and take this settlement for the tribe, of course. They'd actually complete the chapter objectives, although they don't get assessed until the start of the next turn. So now all we have to do is not lose a territory this turn. My anti scordisci army needs to move to where the Scordisci are operating, but the movement range is very low because it's winter, so really we don't make any progress there. We make a little bit of progress with our tiny stack I've got up in Lugia to go towards the siege, but again we can't get very close, we're not in range of the town this turn. The Scordisci, blink and you miss it, actually went away, so they didn't conquer any further into our territory or indeed conquer the place they already sacked. So that's fine, thank you for doing that Scordisci. And the Lugos don't attack this turn. Here's the completion of the chapter then, we actually did it, and we achieved two of the three bonuses. The trade one was just impossible, as it turned out getting two trade relations was never going to happen. We managed to get one at one point for a brief time, I seem to remember. Anyway, so let's see what we have to do now. The next chapter is just about building like three stacks worth of troops, so nice and easy. The bonus objective we need to do here is to raise and sack three settlements. And there's one to build a certain building, which I already had. It was just the level two of a certain uh, temple chain. So we've got one right there. As for sacking or raising settlements, I started thinking, well, the Scordisci give us the perfect chance to do this because our anti scordisci army isn't going to be powerful enough to conquer them. But we could go in, attack an undefended town and then run away with a load of money and start getting ourselves towards this raising and sacking bonus. So that'll be my focus in the south. But the north is the more pressing situation. We need our battered main force to come home, try and find some replenishment and then get into this war against the Lugos. Meanwhile, our reinforcements arrive. They're now next to the town. So if the Lugos attack, then we'll have a few units of reinforcements to help out. Or will we? Because they actually do attack in their turn. However, their general has night attack apparently, even at level 1. So they're using night attack to cancel out my reinforcements. And that balance bar doesn't look good. Still, I decided to fight this because we do have the unspoken for advantage of being atop the city walls, which may allow us to get away with something a bit cheeky. I did have pretty high hopes going into this battle. But then I very quickly remembered the Rome 2 siege defense problem, where units on walls and towers can't target siege equipment in a bizarre twist. So the closer the enemy get, the less you can actually hit siege equipment. When they're far away, you can hit it by accident by trying to shoot the guys behind it. But as they get close, we can arc shots over the top and that means we're going to be not really setting these ladders on fire, which would be the plan to try and restrict the enemy's 
avenues of approach. The towers have the same problem, they can set things on fire with their bolts but they're tending to just shoot them over the top, and as they hit, as mentioned previously, they don't really do anything, so the towers don't give us much of an advantage in this fight. Meaning that we are going to let like 10 ladders dock on the wall, we only have a few melee units to try and stop the enemy, and overall, this battle started way worse than I expected. It's probably not going to continue much better, because some of the men defending the wall, men and women in fact, are like these townsfolk units. Seems like they have two weapon sets, shield and fist, or an axe, that guy's going for shield and fist as well, that seems to be the more popular choice. Axe and shield, well that's just unthinkable. So the enemy melee units now come over the wall, and even where we can defend with Dacian militia, they're not going to be as good. However, the fights will buy us some time, so I can pull my archers back from the wall and just shoot into the enemy blobs. I thought that might do something, but it doesn't do all that much, just because low-level archers have worse bows and do less damage, meaning it's not really killing them, or at least not killing them fast enough, and we'll run out of ammo before we can do enough health damage to make a big difference. I did have a cav unit, and that proved to be more effective. I slammed into some spears here and caused them to rout, securing us a tiny bit of the wall. So I thought I'll try and use those calf to hit some other units. But already time is running out. These archers are out of ammo, as you can see. They're in a great position to shoot the enemy, but they can't do it. We've got a couple of units of Falksmen, who were pretty good actually at charging into the enemy flanks and taking them out. But since they're only garrison Falksmen, they also die quite rapidly. On the right side of the wall, the enemy overcome our townsfolk and start moving in towards the capture point, so now we're in trouble. And here over at the left side, Things are about to break down for both sides. Everyone wants to rout. I thought if I charge my heavy cav in here, that might shore things up. But strangely, the enemy stop wavering after my heavy cav attack. Not quite sure what's going on, but it wasn't the mass rout I was looking for here. We do manage to kill quite a few enemies in that area, but it doesn't matter. We're already overwhelmed because most of the enemy army got up where the townsfolk were defending, and our militia just got killed fighting from the front anyway. So here we are, a while later. We did kill some more enemies as they tried to progress through the town because we had one unit of Falksmen that just wouldn't rout for some reason. That was handy for us. We picked up a few more kills and that's a close defeat. All of our armies dead. Our main achievement is that we took out two enemy units and a few more are very close to being dead. And that enemy army isn't all that big. Then this happens. First, they only sack the settlement so we don't lose it. That's very handy and they go on to attack our reinforcements. Now this isn't a very good battle for us, but with those enemy units being on really low strength, this was very tempting because we only have to kill a few enemies to delete that unit and stop it coming back, which will make re-securing this area easier. And we are going to try this because the enemy pursue me when I fall back, so we have no choice. We need to try and focus down those small units to make sure we get something out of this. This is going to be one of those classic OFD abridged campaign situations where I'm using live footage for a reason that I will explain later. So my plan is to camp on the back line of the map and wait for the enemy to show up and then we'll see what we can do. I've got my men spread out ready to do some maneuvers once the enemy eventually show up and after a very long time they do. It took them a long time because they couldn't actually see us, the AI had to discover us over here. But here's the fight, and you can see what I'm trying to do. I want my heavy phalanx unit, my general, to just camp on the line and draw the enemy in so that the other lesser units can go out to the flanks and try and get something done with a flank attack. This doesn't necessarily work because all it takes for it to not work is an enemy unit to attack my flanking units, and on the right there you can see that is what's happening. But from the left I'm able to both attack enemy archers with my spears and then fold in to hit the enemy from behind after they have started engaging my general. So that's working out okay. The archer unit routes, which makes this even better. However, one unit in the blob there does turn around at the last moment and charges out to meet my charge, meaning that's not really going to be a big rear attack and have any effect at all. Over here on the right, some cav are coming for my spears. They've gone into wedge formation and I thought I was in trouble, but because they have to charge through their own unit, which is for some reason retreating from that fight, their charge was broken up and that just turns out to be a fine melee for us. Now my men already doing the rear attack are in trouble because the enemy general is about to rear attack them. I'm trying to get out of the situation, 
but enemies from the initial block are already pursuing me and those cav are now coming from the other direction. That causes my unit to rout. And obviously, with only three melee units, losing one is a pretty big deal. Our number of options just declined. Their cav looked like they were going to flank attack my phalanx. Could have been an issue, but they gave up at the last second. Since our other spear unit is still indisposed, the only thing we can really do is melee attack with our archers who are now out of ammunition. And I'm focusing on these three units on the right side of my phalanx, their right that is, the left as we look at it here, because these three units are the ones who are really damaged and are easy to kill. However, I didn't think this through, because by fighting beside the line, once they rout, they leave, meaning we can't actually get that many kills against them even if we can defeat them, so overall, that wasn't the best setup for this plan. But the archer attack does work, by cycle charging I rout all three of those small units away, and that actually clears up the right flank for our general as well, which I'm sure he appreciates. Now I wanted to bring my archers around, to go and free up the other spear unit by rear attacking the guys who they're currently fighting. But actually before I got there, we just won that fight in a straight up one on one and the enemy started routing. Seeing that, I'm going to rush back over to surround the group by the phalanx and try to get some rear attacks going. In they come and we flank attack the enemy's cow, or rear attack them in fact. This doesn't have any sort of devastating effect because these tired levy spears don't have anything in the way of a charge bonus. but. That cav unit's damaged and now it's fighting a unit with a bonus against it. They don't like this and we are able to rout that cav unit. As for everything else, well they're not so scared of this levy attack. So I start moving out ready to try and make some kind of cycle charge. I'm also attacking with the archers at the same time, but also they don't have much of a charge bonus and they're getting tired so it doesn't do much. And then disaster, our spear unit routes while it's trying to fall back, you always count as taking a rear attack as you pull out of a charge, so there is a chance of routing when you do that. And that's really bad because we just lost most of our troops in the battle all of a sudden. Our archers try to make an attack here, and this is surprisingly effective, it's actually more effective than the levy spear attack, the enemy are very unnerved, and we do shatter one of the units in this blob. That's great news, however, then the cav we routed earlier, come back from routing, didn't even notice because they were off camera, and bang, now my archers are in enormous trouble, they're going to be absolutely destroyed. So finally we're completely out of options, with all of our spears running away, it comes down to our general and a heavy phalanx unit around him, to just kind of stand there by the line and see what we can do. There aren't even that many enemies left on the field, we have routed quite a lot of stuff away. First, the enemy's cav attack the phalanx and fail as you might expect, so we're able to shatter them. Now we've just got three units of infantry, but two of them are already on low morale, so there's hope here that we'll be able to beat them just since our unit's way stronger than these low level generic spears. And indeed, after a while, we do see one of the units rout as they very gradually fight against the front of our phalanx and die. There we go, now it's down to two, and again one of them's on the verge, so I can hope to finish them off. I just sit here and wait. Came to take a look at what's going on and the fighting is quite infrequent. The enemy seem to be sending individual guys to come over and fight and then sometimes they just go away. And yes, not really much action for either side, but we do rout another unit. That means the battle is coming down to just a fight between the two generals. They've got way more men than us. However, both sides seem reluctant to close together and fight, which seems to be playing to our advantage. I'm not really sure why, but the enemy aren't attacking us as we come in for a closer look. It seems that even though we have a shorter weapon, our attack hitbox is bigger than theirs. So while they've moved up to us and have put themselves in some sort of shield wall formation, we can hit them, but they can't hit us, meaning if I just don't touch anything and this delicate situation continues on, we will eventually get really low probability hits on the enemy and gradually kill them, so let's just wait. <laughs> Da 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 da
And we eventually bag the costly victory. Pretty cheeky. It was actually a Pyrrhic victory, as it says on the campaign map. We lost a lot of men, but the enemy lost more. They're down to two basically dead units. And with that, their invasion has been punished. Although, that's not all that much to be so happy about, because as you can see to the top and top right of the screen, they have way more stuff. The AI is basically cheating with the Lugos, they've got stacks all over the place. But at least, this army can be destroyed. Our tiny remnants ought to resolve their even tinier remnants and get an easy win. So there we go, that invasion has been completely defeated. We're probably feeling pretty good about that. But here comes a bigger invasion with their High King. They've got a high level guy, this is probably their main army. And it's coming via an annoying route. It's taking a long road through that Kronos place to attack us from the northeast. This means we need to send our main force backwards if we want to defend Kronos. And first I thought, well, I guess I don't want to defend it. Maybe we'll just continue on south as before and get some replenishment. But I decided I would try and hold it because soon I'll be able to recruit some more stuff here and it's going to take the enemy ages to show up. So I figured I had time. Now the Scordisi come to attack our southwesternmost corner again, have even less chance than we did when they first attack, so we just let them kill us. And just like before, they actually don't take the territory, they're just sacking it. But the joke's on them, it was already sacked. Then we see some Lugos movements, including their main force going back the way it came, which is so annoying because it's meant we've now walked back and forth over near Kronos for a couple of turns now. We're wasting our main force. We've got a rebellion starting in Lugia. The food situation is still very bad, and now we're out of money. You can see we're actually tanking money loads, even with quite a few territories. They're not in very good condition. Our armies are quite expensive and the sieges, raiding and sacking going on have severely debuffed our income. So overall, we're screwed economically and we're somewhat screwed militarily. You can see another invasion is building up on the border there with the Lugos. So I'm going to fall back into the town at first to defend against it. Then I realized we can actually move out to fight this one general. That general came from the south where there's more Lugos territory. And his raiding is probably messing up our food and income somewhat. So we can auto resolve him to death. And I do just about have enough movement to go back to the town after. But overall, this situation doesn't seem very stable. And I'm going to leave it to the next part to show you how we try and deal with this. <laughs> <laughs> 